I was watching Chris Kenny's program, very good uh, program on Sky News a week or two back, and I stumbled across a young gentleman from Queensland whose name is Will Shackle, who says the majority of young people are in support of, you ready for this, nuclear. That's what I said, as an economically viable source of energy and a way to help solve climate issues. Isn't that something we've been banging on about for such a long time? It certainly is. From time to time, when we look at the way the body politic works in this country, the different participants, it's, it's often the case, isn't it, that we, we get the same voices, dare I say the same old voices, and I, th- I think it's more than refreshing to get a new, younger voice. That voice is that of Will Shackle, who I'm delighted to tell you is on the line. Morning, Will. Morning, Luke. It's a pleasure to be able to speak to you and to share the message for Nuclear Australia. It's really important that this issue gets a platform. And like you said, young people are behind nuclear energy. It's an issue which I would say is probably universally supported by young people. And it's a cause that I'm really happy to get to advocate for through my campaign, Nuclear for Australia, and the petition I've started. So Terrific. thank you very much for having me on uh, this it's, morning. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. There's a an Instagram page, which we'll tell you about, and there's a link on that uh, to a petition if you, if you want to participate. Will, can I, can I do the obvious and ask you a little bit about you? Why did you enter this debate? And perhaps before you answer that, you, you have been active. You're, you're a, a, young, a young man that wants to contribute. I can see that in the debates that, that go on the, uh, around the place. You secured the Simpson Prize Uh, in Queensland, I think, last year. So just tell us all a little about yourself, if you wouldn't mind. Um, So I would say that I'm quite active in a lot of academics and stuff like that. I do debating at school. Um, I've done public speaking before, of course, as you cite, the Simpson Prize. So I'm quite active in sort of those sort of things. And as a result of that, I've, of course, um, crossed over to the political arena. And then that has led me to consider the issue of nuclear energy. So I think that's where... Yeah. That really came from is those experiences that I've had yeah. and being exposed to that issue, which I've really seen the potential in, um, and of, of course, as a result of that side of campaigning for. And, and did you get that from your parents, or just as a an interested young Australian, you saw all mm-hmm. these debates going on and thought, why can't I be part of that? I would say my parents aren't too politically active as accountants, yeah. So it was really, I guess, on my own initiatives that. I was exposed to the issue of nuclear energy and got interested in it. Good on you. Good on you. I don't know how many uh, people you get to talk to about this. Uh, we get to talk to lots of people who call this this radio show, and uh, I, th- I think a lot of people see the common sense behind using nuclear. We have that mm. large uh, reserve of uranium here. Now, it has to be processed, I know, before it can be used for generation. But nonetheless, we do have that resource available to us. We know that in other countries around the world, uh, particularly countries in Europe, for example, they do very well using nuclear energy and do very well fighting emissions by using nuclear energy. Why do we not have a mature debate in this country without raising things like Chernobyl, uh, Fukushima, etc.? Why do you think that is? Well, I think you first have to look back to the reason why we banned it, and it really was a political compromise, actually under the Howard government in 1988, which saw that as a result of the actions of the um, Australian Democrats at the time. So, and I think at the point at which you ban something, there's often, as a result of that, inevitably going to be some stigma attached to it. And what we've seen in Australia is that has resulted in huge misinformation around nuclear energy, whether in regards to the spent fuel and the waste um, that's produced from that, the safe, apparent safety risks. So I think that's really what has prevented us from having a conversation around nuclear energy, one that is based on facts, and hopefully through what I'm doing I'll be able to promote that yeah. um, so we can try and change the tide on the issue. Uh, because uh, specifically about uh, Fukushima, I've spoken to people who've been there subsequent. Uh, to what happened there many years ago. But can you tell me how many people perished due to radioactive poisoning? So, and this is also consistent with Three Mile Islands. There's actually zero deaths um, derived from the Fukushima disaster. And whilst I'm not going to gloss over the fact that, of course, that was an accident, 
it did lead to some undesirable consequences. There was zero deaths um, as a result of what occurred there at Fukushima. And when you compare it to the um, other accidents which have occurred as a result of energy sources, you look at hundreds of thousands of people dying from dams spilling over, the millions of people who die annually as a result of the pollution from fossil fuels. It, we, it's really important that that's put in context um, because it's very often all that misinformation yeah. has led to them, um, those accidents being put out of context and yeah. being inflated in terms of their significance. Well, that's exactly right, Will. They, you know, they lie about the outcome and no one's saying, you know, how good was that that we had these incidents? No one's saying that, but can we at least um, be factual when we report them? And, and to use that mm. as an example of, you know, people potentially dying in Australia if we were to walk down this road is, uh, is, is probably appalling. Bill Gates is in Australia now and he's been mm-hmm. uh, quite vocal, hasn't he, about, about nuclear energy, nuclear power. Um, he's kind of on your side. Um, I know he's talking yep. generally about fission and, and what might happen with new developments, but uh, he, he would have trouble disagreeing with you, wouldn't he? Well, yes, and I think that was apparent in his comments to the Australian Financial Review where he did suggest that the current ban in Australia was political, and I'd have to say I agree with that. He understands, as I do, that there is no apparent reason why the ban can be justified in Australia. And I think just to prove that point, we're the only G20 country in the world which is able to justify that ban. Clearly, um, if it's not that, if they're able to use it and see the potential in it, why can't Australia, why can't Australia see the great benefits that nuclear energy will be able to deliver. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. What will you do with the petition, Will? What have you got in mind there? So ultimately I'm trying to get as many signatures as possible with the petition just to show the support, especially from young people, for nuclear energy in Australia. I think there's obviously um, no amount of signatures where I could go that this would be able to get support and be able to reverse the um, current been in Australia. So I'm just trying to get as many signatures at this stage to sort of build a platform to get some credibility so I can start advocating for nuclear energy. I'd also point to I made a um, submission to the Senate inquiry. So hopefully I'll be called for testimony there so I can advocate for the case for nuclear on behalf of young Australians. So so hang on, you you made a submission uh, to a Senate inquiry um, and uh, by doing that you hope to be able to front the inquiry and and deliver your proposal, your submission in person? Correct. Yeah, that is correct. It's available on the Australian Parliament's website. That's terrific. Um, if anyone wishes to read that. That's terrific. It really is. Um, there, there is the debate about renewables, you know, wind mm-hmm. and solar and, and the, you know, the claim that We've got this great advantage here because, uh, you know, it always win- it's always windy or it's always mm. sunny or a, a mix of two. And, of course, uh, our, we would counter that by saying that's, that's terrific, but without storage it's of no use because it's, it's intermittent. Is, is that what you see as a weakness of yeah. uh, particularly solar and wind? I, I, would, I tend to agree with you. I think what's really important is what I'm specifically advocating for is the ban at very least to be reversed in Australia, obviously solar and wind can be part of the future energy mix in Australia. Mm. But as you said, in terms of storage and providing a baseload dispatchable source of power, nuclear energy will have to be part of that energy mix into the future. So I think there's going to have to be a world in the future where we see both of them complementing each other. I would also um, just like to say that, of course, no energy source is perfect. And you you look at the environmental consequences that are often dismissed in terms of renewables, the huge land footprint, the huge amount of materials they have to use. So I think that's really important to also um, point out that no energy source is perfect, nor is nuclear f- for that matter. But as I've kept on saying, um, it's no reason to keep the ban on nuclear in Australia. Yeah, that's right. The, the ban um, to discuss it within Parliament and, and to have a... You know, a proper conversation about it, That's uh, it, it is just ridiculous. Good on you. Where do you go to school? Um, I go to school at Anglican Church Grammar School in Brisbane. And what do your mates say about, um, about mm. your work in this area? 
Well, all my friends are quite supportive of it, regardless of um, their political views and perspectives, which I think is really quite interesting that nuclear energy is an issue that's been able to unite young Australians. And I mentioned this on the interview with Chris Kenny, but I did a survey and I had a lot of young people contribute this, to this as well. And it actually showed when I asked the question, do you support the ban on nuclear energy being lifted in Australia? Only 10% of respondents said no to that question of people aged from 10 to 19. So it shows an overwhelming support for yeah. the ban being reversed. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really something I'm trying to convey. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's wonderful. I, I think it's wonderful when you consider the fact that it's uh, essentially emissions-free, that it is baseload, it's there whenever you need it, and that we have the, the huge resource. And we know that the technology ar around energy production from nuclear is getting better every day, modular units and who knows what follows. Mm. So a million out of 10 to you, Will, you didn't uh, ring to get a score from me, but as someone who's part of the daily debate, I think it's fantastic someone like you has gone involved. And I want to refer people to the Instagram page. What's that called, mate? Nuclear for Australia. Nuclear for Australia. I've looked at it. I know it's there. So there's no excuse. There's a link to um, the petition there as well. So you can have a, have a play around with that. Hopefully this campaign can get some momentum so we can start to pressure politicians to open their eyes to science around nuclear energy. Yeah, fantastic. and at very least, just have a public discussion. At the very and thank least, thank you for supporting that. A absolutely, Will. Will Shackle, thank you so much for your time.